Um, this talks about Avicenna, and it's a talk in the history of logic. That's because I was invited to talk about that, and uh, anyway, there is uh, new research on Avicenna that I want to report. But it's also about something quite different, and that's the question. Suppose you come across logic, maybe through reading a book, and um, you read it and you think, this is, this is all wrong. It's a good idea to do logic, but this, this, the author of this book got everything upside down. And suppose you've got nobody around to ask, what can you do? What's a sensible way to proceed if you're really prepared to devote a few years to getting right the logic that you think has been done wrong in uh, uh, the available accounts? Because this is exactly the situation that uh, Avicenna found himself in at the beginning of his career. Now, this is new. What I'm saying about Avicenna is new here because, well, because nobody ever looked that early in Avicenna's writings. We're going to be looking at some works uh, that had previously been dated quite wrong and uh, not taken seriously as, as they should have been. Three works in particular. Short Epitome, uh, which I date to 994, when uh, Avicenna was 18 years old. And that's where he decides that Aristotle got it all wrong. Next work is 20 Questions, dated around 1011, where Avicenna argues that new foundations are needed in order to create the logic that uh, should replace Aristotle's logic. And finally, middle summary, 1013, where uh, Avicenna puts it all together. He assembles the points as required by 20 questions and uh, gives his new version of logic. Now, uh, none of these works are available in any, in any Western translation, I'm afraid unless I manage to get a translation of uh, a part of Short Epitome online by the time of this lecture. We are relying on recent scholarship, particularly from the last 10 years, and I should mention four people here whose work I'm particularly relying on. Two of them are Dimitri Gutas and Jules Janssen for their studies of connections between works partly of um, Avicenna himself, but partly of other people. The next is Yusuf Sani in Tehran, who four years ago published an, the first authoritative, authoritative uh, critical edition of the work Middle Summary. I also thank Alexander Kalbacik for contributions he's made on the study of um, the contents of Middle Summary. Now, I'll be taking the work of these four people uh, pretty much for granted in what I say here. Let's start with Short Epitome. 15 pages long. It's a report on the logical writings of Aristotle, what's known as the Organon. For the Islamic world, uh, the Organon had three things in it that are actually not in all versions of the Organon. At the beginning, they put uh, Porphyry's uh, Isagogi as a kind of general introduction, and at the end, they included Aristotle's rhetorics and poetics because they reckon that these are really about syllogisms. By the way, I haven't defined syllogism, but we can say a syllogism is an inference with two premises, one conclusion. The 
so short epitome runs through the organon but it's very heavily concentrated on prior analytics that's the book that studies syllogisms and within uh, the section on syllogisms it actually lists gives three lists of kinds of syllogism only one of them uh, Aristotle's categorical syllogisms the other two are both later now in general short epitome contains things of three kinds the first is stuff taken from Aristotle the second is stuff taken from Al-Farabi's textbook called Syllogism which was published about a hundred years before before Avicenna was doing this work by the way there's um, an annotated translation of uh, Al-Farabi's Syllogism that just came out last year by Salwa Chatti and me the third kind of material is stuff which is completely new it consists of um, ideas that we recognize from later work of Avicenna but they're already there when he's only 18, year old, 18 years old some of them are a bit vague at that point and they need a bit of sharpening up to reach the later forms but um, the ideas are there so the sources are Aristotle Al-Farabi and uh, Avicenna himself uh, one thing he missed out on he did not understand apparently what modal logic is he didn't have any clear idea whether modalized statements and uh, when we say necessarily every C is a B whether the necessarily is a comment on the sentence every C is a B or whether it's actually a part of the sentence so that we're doing um, logic with a necessary operator that can occur in sentences the modal logic is so primitive in in short epitome that um, we just don't know what uh, Avicenna was thinking now Avicenna in his autobiography explains that um, at the age of 16 he decided to spend a year and a half teaching himself the logic of uh, Aristotle and the geometry of Euclid and uh, he worked intensively for a year and a half studying the texts that he had his uh, manner of working was um, to work line by line through checking what inferences there were whether the premises were all accurately and completely stated with our inferences missing that needed to be added in and um, whether everything was there in the right order short epitome fits exactly the situation that Avicenna was in at the end of this period when he still had an extremely limited knowledge of what writings there were in logic but he had a very sound knowledge of what Aristotle had said so that's how we date the work now in his treatment of categorical syllogisms Avicenna makes some remarks about what stay valid if we add some modes to them for example adding necessarily he claims that the following is valid no C is a B every A is necessarily a B therefore every C is necessarily not an A now in fact Aristotle had said that this is not a valid syllogism and Aristotle had given not one but three separate arguments to show that it's not valid what Avicenna does in short epitome is first he states the view of Aristotle doesn't say anything about Aristotle here just states Aristotle's position then he says but the truth is 
and he gives his own view, which is that Aristotle was quite wrong on this. It's an interesting challenge because people had challenged Aristotle's uh, uh, views about modal validity before, but generally they'd said that Aristotle was too generous. And here is Avicenna, a self-taught novice with no consultation with, with experts at all, just pronouncing and giving no reasons for it that Aristotle was not generous enough with his allocations of validity. Now, we jump to 1013 now, to middle summary, where we find that Avicenna is still claiming the validity of that syllogism we saw before. But now he has a proof of its validity. And he can demolish at least some of the arguments that Aristotle gave against it. What's more, he has an analysis of what he had to change, not just in the logical rules, but in what he calls the foundations, or sul, in order to be able to reach the, uh, this uh, reform of Aristotle's logic. The work 20 questions is devoted to identifying the differences between him and Aristotle and the places where a change in foundations was needed. So 20 questions reads to me like an author's preparatory notes for middle summary. We don't often get such things, but um, here we do. And one sign of it being unusual in Avicenna's logical writings, nearly always in his logical writings, he sets exercises for the reader. For example, he does that in Short Epitome. But in 20 questions, he doesn't. And that does suggest that he's not writing for somebody else. Now, what we're going to do in the rest of this lecture is to list five things that Avicenna reckoned he needed to do in order to reform Aristotle's modal logic. As it happens, every one of these five things is based on ideas that Avicenna could have read in earlier authors, but his use of them is, is highly original. I'm afraid it sometimes happens in this field that uh, people say, oh, look, we can find that already in Alexander of Aphrodisia, so it's not original. And sometimes Avicenna has been labelled as an original author for that reason. Now, you have to look at uh, the originality involved in the use of the, uh, these earlier ideas. Right, that's the first section.